What's up everybody? I'm Coach Tyler with Fencer's Edge and today we are going to be talking about the lunge. We're going to break it down from everything on how to do a lunge, the basics of the lunge, to how to change the lunge slightly to get different results and different distances with the lunge. And I'll even be giving you a few um, exercises slash drills that you could do to help you improve your lunge and make it really explosive and fast. Great, I'm gonna let the upper body drop. Wow. And just the action of turning the wrist over is gonna be the point all right, so before we get started today, I want to let you guys know that I plan on doing some Q&A videos to answer all the questions that you guys have and to be as helpful to you as I possibly can. So be sure to comment in the comments below, hit me up on Facebook, send me an email, send me your questions that you have about fencing and I'd be happy to answer them for you and help you improve your fencing game. All right, so the lunge is one of the most important tools in fencing. It's a powerful and explosive and fast way to cover a lot of distance to score a touch very quickly. So it's a really important aspect of your game and it's something that you should really um, work on and hone so you have a really perfect lunge, okay? Because you're gonna be using it a lot in fencing. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the basics of the lunge, on how to do the lunge, all right? So the first and most important part of the lunge actually happens before the lunge even starts, and that is having a really good unguard position with a nice deep bend in your legs, all right? The more you bend down on your legs, the more explosive your lunge will be. Um, your legs are kind of like springs. The more they bend down, the more powerful they're going to spring into action. Okay? So having a nice good unguard position with a nice deep knee bend, especially on this back leg. For the lunge, your back leg is the power leg. It's the thing that propels you forward and pushes you um, to, to get the distance you need to get the touch. Okay? So bending on this back leg is really, really crucial, all right? And that's the first step of how to do a lunge, is having a nice, good starting base position. You're a good on guard position with a nice deep knee bend, all right? So let's break down the lunge step by step. There's a few things that happen simultaneously when making a lunge, and I'm just gonna break them down step by step individually, and then we'll put them all together later, all right? So, um, the first aspect is that deep knee bend. The second aspect is going to be we're going to kick this front leg forward and we're going to really lift and point the toe. So I'm going to kick and lift the, the toe and point my toes towards the ceiling for the lunge. Okay? So I'm going to kick out this front foot and lift up those toes. That way when I land for the lunge, I'm landing on the heel of my front foot and rolling down to the toe. A lot of problems that I see with beginner fencers is when they lunge, they lunge and they land on the toe of their foot or they land flat footed. And this actually um, does not stop your momentum going forward. So when you land and you land on the toe, your body and your weight is just gonna fall in front of that leg and you're gonna be off balance and you're gonna not have as much accuracy um, with your point control and you're also not going to be balanced enough to recover and make a counter action if your first attack doesn't land. So it's really important that when you kick this front foot, you're really lifting and pointing those toes as high as you can up towards the ceiling. Okay? Um, so now the second aspect of the lunge is what you're doing with the back leg. The front leg kicks and you point the toe at the same time that this back leg goes from this bent position to a straightened position. So you're fully extending this back leg on the lunge, okay? So those two things happen simultaneously. The kick of the front foot and the extension of the back leg to give you a nice lunge, okay? 
So those two things working simultaneously are the, the key aspects, the core of a, of, a, of a good lunge, okay? Now let's talk about what you're doing with the upper body for the lunge, okay? Um, when you lunge, it's really good practice to reach back with this back hand. Reaching back with the back hand on the lunge does a few things. One, it helps counterbalance you so your upper body doesn't fall forward. It helps you keep this upper body nice and centered. So reaching back with this back hand is really good for balance. It also does something, it turns your shoulders. So if I were to lunge at my target here, okay, and my shoulders are squared off to my target, I am gonna fall short. But all I have to do without leaning, without stepping any closer, all I have to do is turn this shoulder, boom. And now I have enough distance to score a touch on my opponent. So turning this shoulder, reaching back with this back hand and turning the shoulder will give you that little extra inch or two necessary to have the distance to score the touch. So reach back with that back hand. It not only helps balance you, but it also maximizes your reach. All right, so now that we've covered the basics of how to do a lunge and why it's important, let, now let's talk about how to change the lunge to get different results, okay? So there are a few different ways that you can do a lunge um, other than that first basic lunge that I just showed you, okay? So there are lunges that are designed for speed, so the fastest possible you can fire out from that lunge. There are lunges that are actually meant to be slower, right? You want to slow down your attack and wait for your opponent to commit to making a parry or uh, commit to pulling distance and then finishing the lunge. So you have a, a spectrum of really fast and explosive lunge and a, um, a lunge that is a bit slower. It's a slower lunge. Um, and you also have lunges that are meant to cover more distance and lunges that are meant to just close um, a short amount of distance, but very quickly. All right, so we're gonna go over those different styles, those different types of lunges to get those different results that you're gonna be looking for while fencing. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is how to lunge to get the most explosive, fast lunge possible, all right? Um, so this one is mainly meant for speed. It's for catching your opponent um, by surprise and really firing a fast, direct lunge with the most speed possible, all right? So um, for this one, what's really crucial is we're going to try to lift our front foot off the ground just a very small amount. The higher you lift your, your front leg, the longer it's going to take for you to complete that lunge. So we're going to barely lift our front foot off the ground, maybe about an inch or so, so my heel is going to be just an inch or so off the ground. I'm really going to fire that lunge to get the fastest possible result out of my lunge as possible. So for this one, again, we want to have those, that deep knee bend. That's where all of your power and explosiveness comes from on the lunge. It's having that nice deep knee bend. And I'm just going to lift my front heel up just a little bit when I fire for this lunge. So it looks like this. All right. So this is the fastest lunge possible. You're barely lifting the front foot out and you're just kicking straight forward for that lunge, all right? So on this one, we're still lifting the toe, but I'm not bringing my leg up super high on the lunge. I'm keeping it really low to the ground. That way I can fire directly right into that lunge. One more time. By barely lifting your toe off the ground, it also makes it much harder for your opponent to see the lunge coming. So that is the fastest lunge possible. Now let's talk about how to slow down the lunge. Now I talked a little bit about this before, and we're going to lift the foot higher on this one so we can slow down the finish of the lunge and hold our attack a little bit longer before we commit to finishing our attack. 
okay? So on this one, I'm gonna lift my front leg higher off the ground so I'm actually in the air longer, okay? So I'm still gonna be lifting my toe, but on this one, I'm going to lift my leg up higher and really hold that lunge a little bit longer. So it looks like this, okay? So I'm really holding that lunge in the air, really extending it out, and really delaying when my front foot hits and when my hand finishes for that lunge. So again, one more time. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about how to get the most distance out of your lunge, okay? So how to travel the most distance with a lunge to surprise your, dis your opponent with a very long, uh, reaching lunge. All right, so um, for this one, it's called, I like to call it the sliding lunge. And that's because when I lunge, my back foot, instead of staying planted on the ground, my back foot is actually gonna slide along the ground and I'm gonna travel a little bit more distance with my lunge, okay? So um, for this one, I'm also gonna lift my front leg up a little bit higher. Um, that way I have um, a little bit more time to travel with my lunge. If I don't lift up my uh, front leg as high when I lunge, I'm not gonna travel as much distance. So I'm really gonna reach with my front leg by lifting it up a little bit higher and I'm gonna push and drive off my back leg and let it kind of slide along the ground um, as I'm lunging, okay? So um, here it is. Again, the most important part about this one is having a nice deep knee bend so you really have some power to drive off with this back leg, okay? So, so my back leg slid, I travel distance with my lunge, I'm lifting this front leg nice and high and pointing my toe towards the sky on the lunge. Okay, one more time. Okay, now the other way that you can get a little bit more reach with the lunge is by leaning the upper body, letting the upper body fall forward. So you can really maximize the amount of reach that you get with this lunge. So that would look like this. Okay, so I'm letting my upper body drop and maximizing the amount of reach and distance that I'm traveling with that lunge. Now, sometimes in fencing, you don't want to travel a whole lot of distance with your lunge. Um, sometimes in fencing, it is important to lunge and keep this back foot um, planted so that if you miss or if you're parried, you can recover back to a safe distance. Okay, everyone, so that completes this video on how to do a lunge. I hope you found this information helpful, and I hope it helps improve your fencing game. Be sure to check out my Patreon page. I'm going to be posting a video on some exercises that you can do to help improve your lunge. So if you want some exercises and extra tools and drills that you can do, um, consider being a patron. Check that out by visiting the link below. And as always, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment below. Don't forget to send me any questions that you have. I'm gonna be doing a um, Q&A video very soon, as soon as you guys send me your questions. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and until next time, have fun, work hard, and practice.